think that we're still husband and love and we can't make love. I know you're good. Lots of gratitude, but I can't continue cause I'm just some numbers in your folder. I'm just some numbers in your folder. Somebody, and I'd like to be able to walk and just enjoy the last few years of my life. But it's been killing me, but I decided I want to do something about it. So I heard that you were you were good. So um, Dr. Smith sent me, and I, I want to know what you think. What, what what about the way I'm sitting? I can't sit like this. Is this bad? Oh, okay. you want me to uncross my legs? Yeah, you know, I I don't know why. And again. I know I do it all the time, but why do you think that happens? I just, it's just comfortable. Oh, <laughs> all right, I understand. So if I'm going to stop crossing my legs, that's it? That's it? That's the first session? Okay, all right. Yeah, I'll do my best. I'm not going to promise anything, but I'll do my best. Thank you. Call in chat a little bit. Oh, oh, what's up? Oh, shit, you're a dude, man. I thought you were a chick. What's up? Yeah. Uh, my name is yeah, Chad Lopez. I'm 35 years old. I'm a personal trainer. Listen, man, I was referred to you because I, I lift every single day. Uh, my back, you know, has been bothering me ever since college. I played ball. And I just, I'm like, whatever, you know, it hurts and they get better. And so, finally, you know, it's been a long time. My body recommended you, so I hope you know your stuff. No offense, but I know a lot about the body, so I trust you that you're good, right? Uh, you want to see, see me bend over? Uh, I don't know. Right, so what do you want me to do? You want to bend down, touch my toes? All right, here you go. See that? It's pretty good, right? Pretty flexible, bro. Wait, what do you mean? What's wrong with my back? You put the mirror with? All right, All right let's see. Oh, I'm gonna stick my butt out. Oh, what are you trying to say? I should bend my back, but that's normal? Listen, I was told you gotta have good posture. Listen, man, when I went down the street, I gotta, I gotta let people know who's coming. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna try to bend my back. All right, here I go. Here we go. Uh, uh, wait, is that, how, is that right? Am I bending my back? No. All right, that's it. What do you want me to do? Just start to relax my back and just start to bend it? All right. 
We'll see. See how it goes. Candace. Hi. My name is Candace Lake. I'm 27 years old. I work in marketing. Um, so I found you on Google and um, I thought maybe you could help me. I, I had cancer. And it's in remission. And I'm, I'm a cancer survivor. But Ever since I had the surgery to move my lymph nodes, I've had neck pain. Pretty much for the last five, five to six years, I've been taking Vicodin ever since. And my doctor just said I have to live in the pills. So I, I don't know if you can help me, but I thought I would try. Yeah, what's wrong with? Yeah, I, I, and yeah, it hurts pretty much all the time. I haven't been able to sleep right in the last four years, and I don't know this is TMI, but. I just got married two years ago and I can't do stuff with my husband. So, I'm going to look at my, I'm going to look at my posture. Take a, right, take a picture. That's, that's okay. Oh, that's how I sit? Oh my gosh. So you want me to straighten out a little bit? That just feels so awkward. Oh, that does look better. Okay. So you want me to watch my posture? And just to sit up straighter. Move, because I, yeah, I feel very stiff. Like when I move my head, that's it. Okay. All right, one more move. When she left, I stopped and I noticed something that every time she spoke to me, what do you mean? What am I doing wrong? Huh? Am I, am I talking wrong, you say? And I saw that she was just using her neck the whole time and talking, just like you're seeing right now. And so I laid her down and I said, did you realize that when you talk, you use your neck muscles up to the mirror? And she was like, oh my gosh, is that wrong? And I laid her down to check what we call diaphragmatic breathing, or breathing with your belly, and she took a deep breath in and clenched up her neck. And she couldn't use her stomach, which should look like this. And I told her to start breathing with her belly. And that was the answer, and I realized that sometimes patients do harm to themselves. I was at a conference, and I spoke to this very renowned physical therapist. I said, give me one pearl of wisdom. He said, your patients give you the answer. They tell you the answer. And I said, what the hell does that mean? And I went back, came back to New York, I was looking at patients, looking at people in the mall, looking at people sitting, looking at people of all walks of life, different things that they were doing, and I was like, that people crossing their legs, people crossing their arms, and I was like, oh my gosh, all these things that we do to ourselves are just causing all these imbalances, and it was so easy for me to realize, hey, I could just tell people to stop doing that. So, I'm going to show myself, okay, let's go through exhibits, one through, guess what, I don't know, exhibit one, right on the couch like this all the time, exhibit two, crossing your legs all the time on the right side. Exhibit three, crossing your ankle on your knee like this. Exhibit four, sitting on your ankle. <laughs> Exhibit five, crossing your ankles. Exhibit six, slumping down like this. You'll be the boss. Okay? Exhibit seven, standing like this. Exhibit eight, standing like this. And for those of you who sleep, this one, we got this one. For those who sleep on their stomachs, your neck. Always to the right, neck always to the left, knee always up, just to name a few. That's when I realized that posture was about keeping the posture, it was about moving. So then, a couple weeks later, I called Kathy in. Uh oh, yes, no, I'm much better at not crossing my legs. You just called me at the wrong time. But <laughs> It actually helps a little bit. It's a little bit, a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's better. Okay, so you're gonna test me out? You're gonna test my hips. Okay. I'm gonna lay down. <coughs> okay, lift up my leg. Okay, and you're gonna push. Okay, oh, oh boy. Again, oh, boy, man, wow, that's weak. Like, I think you're just strong. Try the other side. <laughs> Okay, this side. Oh, ooh, I am strong on this side. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so you want me to do this? Like what? Like this? Okay. Oh, I feel the burn. When they... <laughs> Alright, so you want me to stand up and you check my ankles? Alright. So you want me to go up on my tiptoes? Okay, here I go. Oh, oh boy, I can't even hold myself up. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's another exercise. So I just go up on my tiptoes like this and get strong. Okay, so two exercises. Alright, I'll do them. Every single day. <clears throat> like I do with most of my patients. I'll just give my exercise. I'll work my hands up. I lay her down. But like most patients, they tell me a little bit about their personal lives. Lay her down. So I'm working and massaging her quad or her thigh in the front. So, Adrian, where are you from? Oh, Manhattan. Oh, Washington Heights. There's a lot of us Jews up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. Oh, you're 31 years young. You have a girlfriend? Listen, I told you, but I was serious. I can match make you. Apple has a wonderful group of friends and granddaughters who are really good looking. If you like Jewish girls, though, if you don't like them, I'm sorry. But Jewish girls are wonderful. Listen, love is wonderful. You seem like you're so into your career, you don't have time for girls, but I need to find love. It's very important. It's too nice to ask me, but yeah, I was in love once. And yes, I was actually in the Holocaust. That's what this tattoo is from, unfortunately. I'll tell you about that. I was in love with him. So we were knew we were going to get caught by the Nazis. And I was a master knitter. I could knit your stuff in no time. I had gloves, whatever you want. And he said to me, teach me how to do that. Yaka asked me, he asked me how to knit. And I was surprised. He said, listen, we're going to survive. I'm going to survive. I'm going to see you on the other side, even if we get caught. And so I showed him. He learned, he practiced all day, all night. And of course, we got caught. We got put in the camps. And he looked at me and said, I'll see you on the other side. Well. So years later, the war ended, we all reunited, and he survived. Most of the men didn't survive. And I was so happy, I said, how did you do it? And he said, you helped me survive. You taught me how to knit, and I went up to the gods, and I told them, hey, you take care of me, I'll keep you warm, I'll make you a scarf. And he did. He knit them scarves and gloves, whatever they needed, because they weren't getting through that well either. It was freezing. So, it was great. So I missed them. Rest in peace 15 years now. And now, uh, you know, oh, we're, we're done? So, uh, that's another thing is that, you know, I met this man, Johnny, recently. He's a wonderful man. He's Jewish. Wonderful <laughs> Jewish man. And, I can't walk with him because my knee hurts too much. I need him up. He's, he's 78, he's younger. <laughs> and like I said, I don't have too many years in my life, but the ones I have left, I'd like to be able to walk and spend time with him. And, you know, Johnny's not Yaakov. I miss Yaakov very dearly, but Johnny is the only man who just starts to fill that void that Yaakov left. He just begins to fill it. And I would love it if you could just give me a couple more feet to walk with him. Because he fills that void a little bit. And he might fill some other voids too. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, that's what? Some personal stuff with my patients, not just the pain. When Chad walks in, things got real. Yo, bro, I've been waiting five minutes. That's how you run your clinic? If you run it like this, and you always late, I'm gonna find some other place, man. My back still hurts, what you told me isn't really working. Man, it's killing me. My kid wants to play all the time, I can't, can't do it because it hurts, man. So you better fix me or I'm done. No, I'm sorry, actually. Listen, my ex. I'm sorry, I'm just all wound up. My ex has been giving me a hard time. And you know, my back, my ex, it's just it's just all, you know, it's just, it's just bundling up. I'm sorry I took it out of you. 
Alright, but you know, let's see what if you can help me. Alright? Oh, you wanna see me squat? Yeah, squat is what hurts the most. I can't get back to it. Alright. Here we go. Let's see. Okay, man. I trust you. I give up. I give up. Alright. So, 
Well, I'm going to do those leg lifts on my stomach, and I'm going to do the sit-up all the way up. Okay. Listen, listen, man, I wanted to talk to you about something. Um, so, I met this girl, I know my ex, what I said. I met this girl, and she's actually all right. She's, she's okay. So, do you think my back, me and her could, you know, no? Yeah, all right. Um, you know what I mean, right? It's like, I, mean, I want to get busy with her, right? You don't think so? All right. Okay. I got you. You know I meant sex, right? Can this box? Hi. Dr. Adrian. So, um, I feel a lot better. You know, I realized that I was sitting so awful and I sit at the desk all day and I was really scared to, to move my neck because I had surgery there and it just felt so tight and I was scared, you know? And the cancer, I was just very scared. But now I move a lot better and I'm more aware, aware of how I sit. So, I actually, um, um, I used to work out a lot in college and I wanted to know if I could get back to going to the gym. I used to run, play, yeah, pretty much everything. So you want to just try it, but there's no reason not to do it. Okay, I, I guess I just needed somebody to tell me it was okay. I was scared for, I guess, the past five years to not exercise. I feel so awful right now. But, okay, I okay. all right, thank you. Oh, and <laughs> me and Brian had sex. <laughs> so, Obviously, you realize what I learned, right? Everybody was getting laid except for me. <laughs> but the other thing was that one of my, another mentor of mine said something else and asked about pearls of wisdom. So he gave me a pearl of wisdom and said, and this is a guy who worked professional athletes in NFL players, he said, athletes are going to hide stuff from you. You will not be able to figure out what's wrong with them just by watching them. And I said, wow. So I was like, what does he mean? What do they hide? I was looking at my patients, looking at people on the street, training some high-level athletes, some of the most fit people I've ever seen in my clinic. And I realized that it was true. That just like Chad wasn't using his right butt cheek, he was just doing squats. He had no idea. There was no blood test to figure out if a muscle was weak or if a joint was inflexible. And I started realizing so many patients were missing these muscles, and I started looking for books and finding out what muscles. I had to review my stuff from school that I'd forgotten how the muscles were attached and how they're all connected, and how remarkable the brain is. And pretty much exercise is not just for the aesthetics, but it's also just reminding your brain to use a muscle. If you reach up, your body, if this muscle's weak, will use this muscle for this muscle, and that will become overcompensation and create pain. And so that's what exercise was doing, I realized. It just connects. And stretching out, it tells your muscles that it's okay to stretch out. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And the other part that books and school doesn't always tell us was stress. What stress does, it releases a hormone called cortisol that beats the crap out of your tissues. So if you have a little bit of a problem, that cortisol will make that little problem multiply by 10 times. That's why I tell people, listen, life's going to get you. You should make sure you take care of any problem that you might have, any pain, any condition, any weakness, any aching, any stiffness in the morning. Because the day that that stress hits, it's going to magnify 10 times. That's when I realized two things. That sometimes we inflict pain on ourselves, and the other one is that it's not always obvious. Oh, this is wonderful. I was able to walk with Johnny. My knee feels a little bit better. Not perfect, but I can tell it's going to get there. And I just wanted to thank you that it feels so much better. And I'm going to continue doing it. And I know I'm 85, but I'm going to keep doing those exercises until I die so I can spend time with Johnny. So I just wanted to thank you. And I'm going to continue on my own, but I appreciate everything you've done. So thank you.
Oh, and this is Rachel's number. Her name is 718-662-6345. She is Ethel's niece's daughter, and she's wonderful. She's Jewish. She's wonderful. <laughs> she's waiting for your call. <laughs> Chad comes in. A lot more relaxed this time. I've been doing what you told me. I didn't realize how many exercises I was missing. I thought it was enough to just have a six pack and 2% body fat, chiseled abs and nice butt, and do squats and push ups every day. And you taught me something different. Everything was, was okay to do. So I appreciate it. And Chad turned seven and I was able to play with him. That's the birthday party. So I just wanted to thank Candace Wilson. I think I'm there. I think I'm almost there. I wanted to thank you. I had no idea that it was possible to feel better without infecting me. I thought that was going to be the rest of my life, and I trusted my doctor. But I'm glad that I found you. And my relationship with my husband is much better. I've been able to go back to the gym and enjoy life and not be in pain and be able to sleep. So I thank you, and I'm going to continue with what you told me. And as a physical therapist, I realize I may not be saving lives, but maybe I'll save the quality of lives of people. And all these patients taught me so much throughout my career. My early career, later on, and even still I'm learning. And I continue to learn from my patients and people around me. And so three things I pretty much learned was how stress can destroy you if you are not physically healthy that your body lies to you and may not always be healthy. And that's where exercise comes in and using your body and challenging you. And then sometimes we have to be aware of what we're doing to our own bodies, our postures, our movements, do too much of one thing to go catch up to. So those were, up until now, big things that those patients I was able to help. But who knows how many more are still in pain and they're taking opioids nonstop and think that there's no help out there. So the next part is a new part. And I have to admit, I don't have uh, a patient who I treated. Most of my experience comes from a friend. From the media reports, you may have seen or heard about the one with concussion with Will Smith and some NFL players coming out about their problems. So um, a lot of it is that maybe we're not doing enough. We don't know what to do. And those studies and things started in 2002. And hey, you guys stop talking. I'm doing the show here. Okay? What, what are you doing texting? Give me that phone. Sorry. Like football. I have a lot of concussions in my life. I take a lot of medications. And sometimes I don't know what I do. I'm sorry. Like Schwartz and I got bricks for brains Full of stains cause I love the game And I made a name with the price of fame Got me saying some crazy shit And the voices in my head are even crazier That's just test me, but can't help me So they give me pills and they give me chills And they don't do deal and they shatter my will They shatter my will I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead Cause it takes 20 minutes to get out of bed I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead Cause it takes 20 minutes to get out of bed I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead Cause it takes 20 minutes to get out of bed I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead Cause it takes 20 minutes to get out of bed I look in the mirror but I don't see the whore That just bring me in and send me out Feel like giving in and going out Like this hip and knee keep giving out Or is this what regret's all about? If I could, I'd be on my knees for an answer For an answer It's a short time, let's give me a short time It builds up like an end, like an end, like an end It's a short time, I'm afraid that I'm taking for the rest of your life I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead Cause it takes 
takes you 20 minutes to get out of bed. I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead, cause it takes you 20 minutes to get out of bed. I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead, cause it takes you 20 minutes to get out of bed. I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead, cause it takes you 20 minutes to get out of bed. I wake up every morning and I wish I was dead, cause it takes you 20 freaking minutes to get out of bed, yo. Tomorrow, I have six appointments. Read of those?